All right, so let's go over the expectations for the titration lab. Once again, I have written the introduction for you so you have a good idea of what is required in an introduction section, and you can use it as an exemplar when we eventually write your own lab report. Again, because I've already written it for you, you do not have to submit this part to me. Moving down, you see the material section has already been written out for you, and so is the methods or the procedures section. So those three sections do not have to be submitted to me. Uh, let's take a look at what you do need to submit, though. So once again, most of the lab report has already been written for you. There's no need to rewrite those sections. Instead, you will complete the observation section, discussion section, and application section. Be sure to include a proper cover page for your lab report. So the first thing I need you to do is to create two properly labeled and organized data tables, one for table vinegar and the other one for pickling vinegar. All right, so here are the observations for table vinegar and here are the observations for pickling vinegar. I need you to organize this titration information for table vinegar and I need you to organize this titration information for pickling vinegar. So in the end, you'll have two data tables and each data table will have three separate trials, three separate trials. Each data table must show the initial and final volumes for every trial, as well as the volume of sodium hydroxide that was used during each trial. Depending on how well your table is organized, hopefully it makes sense, I will give you a mark out of five. Don't forget to put in a detailed title, all right? That is the observation section. Next is the discussion section. I want you to answer these questions on a separate sheet of paper. Because these are calculations and typing up equations takes forever to do, I highly recommend that you write out these calculations on a separate sheet of paper with a pencil and then take pictures of them and then drag and drop them into your uh, document. Just please make sure that the pictures are upright. I don't want to have to rotate them. Okay, Make sure they're facing the right direction and make sure I can read them legibly. Some of you have been uploading image quality that has been very, very low and it's very difficult for me to see. Uh, again, if I can't see it, I can't mark it. If I can't mark it, you're getting a zero. So show all your work and calculations. Full marks will be awarded for full solutions. So the goal of this lab is to find out the molar concentration of acetic acid in table vinegar and in pickling vinegar. These are two different types of vinegar. And because they have different uses, they will have different concentrations of acetic acid inside. And so we did three separate trials for table vinegar Here's what I measured the initial volume of sodium hydroxide to be. Then after the titration, once it's been drained out, it got down here. Now be careful. Watch these volume values. It goes upside down. So 10 is at the top, 11 is at the bottom. So when you read up, don't think it's 11.2, 11.4, 11.6, 11.7 milliliters. No, this is not 11.7 milliliters. Think about it. 11.2, 11.4, 11.6, 11.8, 10? It should be 12 up here, so that does not make sense. So please be careful. This value should be 10 point something, not 11 point something. So record what volume you see. Remember, we always read the bottom of the meniscus. And then subtract the final value from the initial value to determine what volume of sodium hydroxide did you add in during this titration for trial number one. Do the same thing for trial number two and trial number three. And we're going to take these data points and try to average them together to calculate how much uh, acetic acid is located inside my table vinegar. Then you're going to do the exact same thing over here, except it's with pickling vinegar. Using the data you collect in the observation chart, you answer these questions and do these calculations. And then answer these questions at the bottom. Based on your calculations above, which type of vinegar, pickling or table, had the highest concentration of acetic acid? And explain to me why would table or why would pickling vinegar have more acetic acid than the other one? What's the purpose? Why did the manufacturer design it that way? Make sure you reference the purpose of each vinegar in your answer. Finally, during the titration, the three trials did not match up exactly in the volume of sodium hydroxide used to neutralize the same volume of vinegar. So what is the primary source of experimental error during this lab? Now, it's important that you talk about experimental error not human error. In science lab reports, we never discuss human error. Human error is also known as human stupidity. This is something that's preventable. So don't go advertising how dumb you are. Do not say, as an error in the lab, oh, it's because the person spilled some of their chemicals. No, they should repeat the experiment until they stop spilling those chemicals. The human errors are preventable errors. You should instead focus on experimental errors. These errors are unpreventable. You cannot stop them unless you redesign the experiment in order to avoid them. So one example of an experimental error might be the type of chemical you're using. So maybe from the manufacturer, you purchased the 
purity instead of the 99.99% purity. All right, so using the 98% pure chemical, obviously there's going to be some experimental error involved because 2% of it may not be the chemical you think it is. And during this experiment, you'd be unable to prevent this error unless, of course, you redesign the experiment. Instead of using 98% uh, pure, use 99.99% pure chemical compounds. All right, so that's an example of an experimental error, something that you can't prevent unless you redo and redesign the experiment and use something else, something else to minimize or prevent this error. Well, human error is something that is preventable and you should repeat the experiment over and over and over again until you stop making that error. Now, just so you know, the experimental error example I just gave you, that is not the major source of experimental error in this lab, all right? So it's not due to impure reactants. There is something significantly more prone to error in this lab. Now, the last part, the application section, is probably the section you want to do first. Running through this online simulation will help you to better understand what these all are and how to answer these questions over here. So I highly recommend you do the application section first. What you do is click on this link and follow the instructions as you work through a sample titration simulation. At the end of this activity, there will be a page where you can reflect upon how well you did, where you can improve, and also make a prediction. So you're gonna fill in these text boxes at the very end of the simulation. Now, when complete, you're gonna take a screenshot of your answers. You can do this by pressing the print screen button on your keyboard and then pasting that image into your Word document. But if all of that is too complicated and you're not sure how to do the screenshot, just take out your cell phone and take a picture of your computer monitor. That works as well. Just make sure, once again, that your responses are legible. I cannot mark what I cannot read. And then don't forget to copy and paste your screenshot into your lab report document. So this application section will be marked out of 10. I'll be grading you based on your answers in these text boxes over here and the quality of your answers. But as well, I will be deducting half a mark for each mistake you make during the simulation. The maximum number of points you can get during the simulation is 1,000 points. For each mistake you make during the simulation, you lose 10 points. So in this case over here, this person lost 10 points, so that means they made one mistake, which means they get 0.5 marks deducted from these 10 mark over here. Now, you can redo this simulation as many times as you want until you get the score that you want. I really like this simulation. It's as realistic as you can get, and a lot of the mistakes you can make in this lab is very similar to the types of mistakes my students make in an actual lab. So please, redo it as many times as you want. You will learn from your mistakes eventually, I hope. And there really is no excuse for not getting a perfect score so long as you're willing to put the effort in. All right, so once again, when you're done the simulation, which I do recommend you do first before you do the rest of the lab report, do the simulation first and then screenshot it. Tell me what your score is. Tell me what your responses are. And then copy and paste this image into your lab report. All right, so these are the four sections that I need you to complete for this specific lab report.